So one of the advantages advantages of running multiple processes is that your app never has to go down. It's always going to be available to your users. And let's say one does die, well your main processor uh, can detect that and spawn a new one. This is why it will never go down and it will always be available to your users. So let's actually take a look at the code for that. So we're going to be using our code from last time and I'm just go over it real quick. On line five, we, we define our master on line seven. We're just spawning, um, workers for the number of CPUs that we have. And on line 10 is where we create a server for every worker that we spawn. I'm just going to modify this right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, you know, just log out that we started out a, uh, a worker. So started a worker at, now I'm gonna just give it the process ID process dot ID or PID control save. And in our master if class right here, I'm just going to find out if a worker actually did die. So cluster dot on, and then we're going to give it the event emitter exit. This, this is going to detect if a worker did die and it's going to return a callback, which I'm just going to say worker just like that. And we're going to just let our, you know, user know or the backend know at least. So worker process, um, process dot pid had died down below. Oh, not like that. We're going to let the user know that how many workers are still left. So console log only, and it's going to be a, um, I mean, you should, you should, you should get it, but I'm expanding a bit object dot keys cluster dot workers. And then outside of that dot length. Okay. So cluster workers returns an object. If you just literally count all of this, it'll return an object and we just want to get the keys of that object, which this object dot keys is going to return an array of the keys inside of cluster of workers. So since it's an array, we're just going to get the length of that array and that'll tell us how many are still left. How many workers are still left? Remaining. So now we need a way to actually kill our processes. And we're going to do that down here when we send off the request and res. So down here, I'm just going to uh, res dot end. We're going to send a message out. Um, <clears throat> process give out the process name right here process not pid we're just letting it we're just letting it know what process we're on right now so and then down below this is where we're gonna let our user kill a process so if <clears throat> we're gonna set the rec url if the rec url equals to slash kill we're going to kill a process. So process, whatever process we're on right now. So exit and then else if <clears throat> rec dot URL equals triple equals uh, our home page. We're going to log out serving and get the ticks in serving from, and then we're going to give out the process ID 
dot pit. All right, let's give it a shot in our browser. So node, I need to get inside my So node zero downtime and I do have an error on line twenty seven. Am I missing not line twenty seven? There we go. I was just forgetting this curly brace right here. But we're seeing our worker start. So each worker has a different process that has a process ID. A different process ID. So let's look in our browser and actually try this out. Localhost 3000. And now you see that we're being handled by process 11320, serving from 11320, which is definitely a process worker we have. But let's say we kill this route. Let's see what happens. Now worker process 320, 3248 had died, only serving remaining. And now we're getting served by, let's go back to localhost, 16376, 16376, not 30, but 376. But as you can see that every time we go to the home page, it's not going to die. Even though we kill that processor, kill, we're killing it. Worker process 348 had died. Let's refresh this. Now we're getting served by 232 which is right here 232 so it doesn't matter how many times we kill a process we're always going to be served from another process but now that we only have five remaining if I keep on killing 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 and then we go to localhost it'll just keep on look at this It'll just keep on holding and then you're gonna unable to connect. That's because we don't have no more process working and you're literally going to, you're going to die. So this is why processes are amazing is that as you saw right now, that even though we kill one, another one just takes its place, but we still haven't done absolute zero downtime, which means that every time a processor dies, we're gonna spawn a new one. So let's actually do that right now. Let's go back to the code. So instead of letting our workers know, or our users know how many pe people are, uh, what? Instead of letting our users know how many workers are left, we're going to actually just let them know. We're going to log out. Starting. Starting. New worker. And we literally just call out cluster.fork. And this will spawn a new process so let's take a look at it well we gotta start it first and then take a look at it so we got our workers right here let's take a look at it over here refresh the page and now we see that we're getting 14804 do kill so 1976 just died let's refresh that only six remaining five remaining four did i save my I didn't save it. Sorry. Let's, uh, I kept on seeing this going down. I'm like, I'm not printing any numbers. Let's, uh, let's do this one more time. So node, um, zero downtime. All right. Now let's try it. Let's not kill. Let's go to our main page. All right. 12, 376 right here. Let's go to slash kill. Now, obviously, you don't want the slash kill in production, and I hope you never have a slash kill or a way to kill a process. It's not good, <laughs> but um, yeah. So let's keep. We're gonna keep on killing. See, every time we kill, we, we're being served a new process. We're being served a new process, so that way it could keep on running. But I could keep on doing this all the time, and we're always going to be able to see our page. Like it's never gonna die. Well, it's never gonna die to the to the point where, like, if you have a bug in there and you don't have a way to handle that bug or the error, then yeah, it's gonna throw out an error and then die, obviously. But as long as you're, it's almost bug free, and uh, yeah, just like that, 
or bug free, I guess, and you handle all your errors, it, it should work just fine. But that, isn't that pretty cool? Anyways, guys, this is actually called absolute zero time. The absolute part is literally is never going to die. Um, but thank you guys so much. Wa what? So much watching. I was going to say that. But thank you guys for watching this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like or a dislike. Uh, comment down below on what you thought about the video so far. And um, if you haven't, please consider subscribing to this channel. Um, and the next time we're going to be talking about working with clusters with PM2. Uh, we will define what PM2 is. If you know what it is, that's great. If you don't, you'll, you'll know in the next video. And we're going to be doing clusters in that instead of here. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. See you in the next video.